characters relating to their audience can sometimes be hit or miss. For the longest time, storytelling has adopted different techniques in order to have the reader, or the viewer, empathize with characters. And this goes even further beyond in the medium of gaming. In a story where you, the audience, becomes an active participant, it adds a whole new layer of storytelling ability. In a game where you yourself become an extension of the protagonist, the motivations, thoughts, and feelings of the hero have to also affect you, going beyond the screen and onto the person holding the controller. After all, haven't you ever played a game where you didn't seem to at all care about the hero? Or even worse, the hero's characterization and wants become separate to what it is that you wanted or what you were experiencing while holding the controller. Why not have the Gorons stay healthy by eating rocks and they're slowly becoming rare as you progress through the dungeon and he's on the verge of fatigue? Shit! Don't you want to get him some rocks to stay the hell alive? This is what's known as ludo-narrative dissonance. It's that disconnect or contradiction between the player and the character, or the game's design and narrative structure. The game's hero is a character that is ever-present throughout the story of the game, and it's the character or characters that we assume while playing. Thus, in order for us to have a full understanding and appreciation of the story, we must at all times be synced with our hero. In Evan Skolnick's book, Video Game Storytelling, he defines the hero as you are the hero. While a player avatar is a vehicle of sorts, it is much more than a car. It's a character, a person, with opinions, desires, and intentions. So, with these points in mind, there is but one game that pops into my head when I think of a game that has me connected with the hero on such a perfect level. To further explain my points, I'd like to refer to Play Dead's wonderfully dark and brilliantly designed adventure, Inside. This game is a wondrous example of a strong character-to-player relationship. It's here that we find ludo-narrative harmony. Inside does an amazing job at making me, the player, motivated, curious, and wanting to play the game right. So, let's start from the top, shall we? Inside is a puzzle platformer adventure game from the same company that made the acclaimed Limbo. You start the game off as a little boy stumbling through the woods. No dialogue, no setup. Immediately, this has me curious. Just as with any audience member starting a new story, we're open-minded for the first parts as we try to understand the rules, the world, and our characters. So, automatically, I'm curious as to why this boy is in the woods. Is he running to somewhere, or from somewhere? Not long after the game sets up a fallen tree which teaches you the jump button, you come to a grinding halt when you see a truck full of mysterious people, and what looks like someone in a mask hauling the load. Here's what's interesting about this scene. You pause for a moment to take a look, but the designers purposely put this gigantic tree next to where you'd end up stopping and watching. Now. Pay attention to the boy. He seems... afraid. Hiding, almost. He doesn't show this kind of animation at any other point, so why is it now that he's doing this? Is he hiding from these men? Who knows. But we trek onward as the truck seems to have moved forward anyway. And at the next jump that we make, we land behind a rock, watching two men with masks beginning to investigate the area. If you're the patient kind of player, you'll notice that same, curious animation again from the boy, as if trying to elude the men. For me, when I first played this, I only watched for a split second, and I just kept on running right. I wasn't exactly sure if these were enemies or just background characters. Anyone who's played this game will know that as soon as you step out there, the two men will reach for the boy, grab him, covering his mouth. A look of terror reads across the boy's face as the screen fades to black, resulting in a death and a restart. Essentially, game over. This scene, this particular enemy encounter, does a fantastic job at both teaching the player the game, as well as locking in motivations between us and the boy. Here, let me explain. When you die to these men, 
you then understand that there will be stealth segments, enemies that you must try to escape from. Combine this with the boy's hiding animation and look of fear from his body language, and you know that this little boy, our hero and protagonist, does not want to be caught by these men. And if you refer back to him stumbling through the woods and hiding from the truck from the first scene, you then understand that he's on the run from these unnerving masked enemies. So, within just the first minute and 30 seconds into the game, we have learned three things about Inside. One, the boy is our protagonist. This is also accentuated by his red jacket, which is in contrast to the monochrome color scheme throughout the game. Two, he's trying to escape a group of dangerous hunters looking for him. And three, this game will involve sneaking your way past enemies. All of this makes me connect with the hero. His goals are mine. I don't want to be caught and snagged by the mysterious folk because it'll be game over, so I want to hide. Simultaneously, the boy himself doesn't want to die, so he wants to hide and get to where he's going. This is what I mean when I say that you are now an extension of the hero. Now, the little boy's goals have become mine as well. Of course, this might seem like such an obvious thing, and it is, but oftentimes in gaming, there are moments where you'll be doing something that may seem out of character, or the gameplay segments might be separate from the story. This is what involves ludonarrative harmony, or rather, a good game design. It's when the two aspects of playing and participating amalgamate with the elements of the narrative. Examples which show the opposite of this idea are games like Spec Ops The Line, whose themes involve a lot of anti-war messages, and yet the killing of soldiers and participating in war is wholly the gameplay, which is of course a bit of a contradiction. Some examples of ludonarrative dissonance might just involve a complete separation of character to player actions and the story. Square Enix's recently released Final Fantasy XV is an example that comes to mind as well. Even though we see and hear a bit about the death of Noctis's father, the destruction of his home city, and the emotional distraught brought to him, we never really feel any of it through the gameplay. Or sometimes, Noctis might be assembling the power he needs to become a true king, but his lines, his attitude, all seem to be losing a sense of urgency, almost as if he doesn't care so much about doing any of this, and seems to be much more interested in instead simply getting his car back from the enemy. The point is that sometimes in gaming, not all aspects of the gameplay complement all aspects of the story and character, and when that happens, that's when the disconnect that I talked about earlier occurs. But Inside is the prime example of when two meld together in a way that it creates the perfect video gaming experience. Aside from the opening sequence, the game continues to be consistent all throughout. Inside consists of plenty of puzzles which block your forward path, which essentially roadblocks our hero from his journey. So, by nature, we want these puzzles solved. We want this forward momentum to continue just so we can unlock the next bits of story and so that ultimately, the boy can reach his end goal. A hero, just like any other main character in a film or in a television show, we want to root for them to succeed. The creators want us to connect, to empathize with their heroes. And in video games, the designers want just the same thing. But again, if they fail to reach out to us through that third layer of participating, of playing, then they will fail at ultimately making us care about the hero, about their game.